All right. Hi. Um, it's Kathleen with Creative Interviews with Tree Sisters, and today it's my honor to bring to you Barbara Donahue. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you. I'm really excited about this interview. Uh, one of the most creative people that, um, that I have experienced, actually. So um, we're going to have a lot to talk about. I'm going to give you a little bit about Barbara before we start. <clears throat> so Barbara is a retired e ecologist. And with her professional career behind her, she is currently putting her energies into her art, teaching wild crafting of medicinal and culinary herbs, and other workshops through her local wellness center. Barbara works in a wide variety, as you'll see, of mixed media. You name it. She says it herself. You name it, collage, digital montage, beadwork, paper mache, sculpture, ultra bowls, spinning, natural dyes, felting, knitting, and crochet. And one thing that uh, she didn't put in here, but I would, would be wordsmith. I love her way oh. with words. Thank and, you. and you're currently working on a book, For the Love of Gaia. Art and Essays of a Contemplative Ecologist, wonderful title, a writing that she has dedicated to Claire Dubois and the Tree Sisters Collective. So we are more than honored uh, by all of that. And it's just, uh, it's just beautiful that to be able to, like we talked a little bit before this, that our lives, you know, just gathering all the knowledge that we have in our lives as we go along and then coming to a point where you have a place that, that we are so lucky that you are coming to us and sharing what it is that you gathered along the way and inspiring us and laughing with us and um, gifting us and uh, just with your heart, your big heart and soul. So I'm really happy to, uh, to have you here, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathleen. I'm just more than happy to be here. Yay. Well, so we're sitting in your, in your studio. My creative corner in the house, put it that way, yes. <laughs> this is my bedroom. This is my bedroom, as I explained to Kathleen. I don't have the opportunity to have a room, but I have allocated a lot of my room, but mainly my working place for my studio and everything I do is about a little less than six feet wide and four feet in depth in depth and i've just um created this over the years and this is where i work is right everything you could possibly want to work with right at your fingertips in the smallest even the smallest of spaces right? for our kitchens we share our living rooms we share mm -hmm. our bedrooms we share the family rumpus room one thing we don't share at times is our bathroom to have privacy but outside mm -hmm. of that space for women to have uh, sacred space to just simply be and simply do yeah. is actually a commodity that doesn't come easy. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah. So tell us more, how long have you been living? You're, you're in Aden, did you say Aden? Aden, California. Aden, mm -hmm. California. I've been here almost 30 years. Wow. A long time. I live in an old, old house that was built in 1868. Uh, no central heat. No anything, no central air, no central heat. Um, it was built at a time before electricity and plumbing. Mm -hmm. And so it um, has its own unique characteristics. But uh, what brought me here was work. Um, as an ecologist, you don't live in the city most of the time. If you want to work and work on projects, you've got to go where the work is. And so yeah. I came from Nevada, open, big, high desert sky country. Mm -hmm. I was working as a uh, wetland ecologist for the Nature Conservancy Wonderful. and working on a huge, huge landscape project for them in the Western states and came here when the ranch I was living on changed management. I was living on a ranch, like in a commune type thing, collective living. Mm -hmm. And um, it clo I couldn't stay anymore. So came here with one of, one of the women that lived there. And so um, we've been here ever since. We've been here ever since. 
And so um, I, you see me post pictures like the other day, I'm out wandering in this just gorgeous area. Yeah. It's outside my door, Kathleen, mm. it's outside my door. Yeah. It's maybe three miles from my front door to get there. Wow. It's not like I've got to go travel miles and miles to get to be out, out there with nature yeah. or yeah. be with mother. I can go up the hill behind my house or I can just hop in the car and go three miles into uh, all close to 20,000 acre wildlife refuge. Nice. And, oh. um, since my studies and my work was a lot of restoration ecology with wetlands, mm -hmm. I have an affinity for the systems. And so that's why you see a lot of my pictures and a lot of oh, my okay. artwork reflecting that. Yeah. You're in the perfect place for, for Barbara to be in, it looks like. <laughs> As I was wrote in my one of my latest essays, I said it's a perfect place for me to be for you, because mm -hmm. why? Like we do sistering calls in the Tree Sisters Nest. Yes. And I was just recently introduced to that. You know, I haven't been attending, but I did attend the last one, and yes, what was so did. profound to me about that was the fact that we can communicate with one another, even through this electronic world, right. and pay attention and give love to one another simply because we can. It's amazing, isn't it? Many of our tree sisters are urban bound, okay? Mm -hmm. Are city bound, mm -hmm. they're urbanites, okay? I, and the gifts that mother has for me here, I can give to you simply because I can. Right. And so like, if I go to bless the water, you and I are connected because there is no separation. There is no separation. And so I can carry you here, I can carry all of us here, and take it out into the ground where I put my hands and place my forehead. And it's, it's an, an edifying action on my part. It's not just for me. It's not just yeah. for my little world, my little, because we belong to something bigger. Yes. And so, um, but it's right outside my door. And so I offer it simply because I can. Because you can. And because you understand that. And thank you for bringing us with you in each moment. But where did you find out about Tree Sisters? And what totally time? by accident, completely by accident. I think it showed up uh, as an ad maybe in Facebook or something, or there was a tagline to it in my own Facebook space because of my interests. And so I entered in to take a look at what was there and listen to Claire's, um, the first lessons that we learned. Uh, through some of the main teachers there, Barbara, Max Hubbard, etc. And I just went, whoa, there's yeah. others out there like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in uh, mid-December of 2017. And I began then on the first walk around the wheel. Um, yeah, yeah. That first walk in January. I, we started it then. And I just jumped in and said, I want to be a part of this and see what the teachings are. Mm -hmm. And it literally broke me open yeah. to a level deeper of more home with myself, mm -hmm. of different teachings and ways of looking at things and embracing things that has always been here. You know, right. I've always been here. Yeah. But you and the other women and Claire helped put it together in words get this i walked in the first first opening with claire and i was walking i came down the down the stairs and went to my partner beach i said this is an initiation i shut it off i said this is an initiation this is not a simple message these are words of power right. and i said told beach i don't want to be manipulated i don't want to be you know suddenly <laughs> realizing that i'm walking into an initiation without giving my permission because I was surprised by it. I thought, oh, this is just a little sharing, listening thing, <laughs> until I felt it hit the center of my, myself. Mm -hmm. And it was a vibration of potency and regeneration that I knew immediately was an initiation. Mm -hmm. But I, I went downstairs, I said, she's using power words. <laughs> she's using power things to shake things, although it's, it's just part of her communication. So I stepped back for about half hour, <laughs> then went back, plugged it back in, and continued on my way. And so now wow. I'm here. Really, that's really a wonderful understanding from you about that, you know? It's an initiation. It's yeah. an initiation. Yeah. Absolutely. And you took a step back in order to give, to give permission, that you knew that you wanted to, that it was your choice to yes. move all the way. That brings me to, like, showing your 
your art. So I'm going to take the time. Well, here's your beautiful studio. There's my corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the side that you know that's right in front of you right now, and your yeah. and your beautiful bird indigo. My heron. Yes, on. my heron. And we'll let's go to this one. So this is one of the first collages that you actually posted during the time of your first uh, go around the inner journey, right? Yeah, this was my first piece of work uh, from the Tree Sisters teaching. Now, montage, I take all, I take photographs, okay? If you take a look at the moon in the upper corner was the super moon that January and uh, that I'd taken a photo of someplace, okay? That's my apple tree in the backyard mm -hmm. and it has a wound in it. That, that's my face I took photographs of and compilated a headdress made of my bird headdress over here. <laughs> Yeah. Christmas lights, anything I could. I think there's about 10, uh, let's see, eight layers of photographs in this one piece mm. to create this one. And the reason why I created it, its name is Heartwood Emerging, was because I felt myself, a new sense of self, through teach, Tree Sisters teaching, beginning to come out of the nature of who I am. That's and beautiful. so... This, and that, this and that, was the very first one. And that's before you knew that we we have a volunteer team, which is called the Heartwood. So this is... I had no was, idea. Yeah. It has a different effect on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I've had this hanging at the wellness center. I had it printed on a large canvas. I mean, it's big. It's really mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. And I've had multiple offers to buy it. But what women, when they come into the wellness center, have seen it, they've been stunned and said, oh my God, that's me. And it's like, mm. really? Wow. We're just doing something here for myself. Yeah, yeah, that's extraordinary. It's um it's really beautiful. And I remember when you first did it. There's it who's the second one? Are you still are you still there? You All look, oh. about the spiritual outwork of nature. Yeah, in women. Yeah. The simple needs, the lower rush creek. Again, photo montage. My hands separately photographed. Uh, one of my altar bowls <laughs> separately photographed mm -hmm. and placed in conjunction with a small cascade at a friend's house, mm -hmm. uh, Rush Creek. Again, that's one, two, three, four different layers of my photographs put together to form one. Yeah, that's, it's actually one of my favorites. One of the aspects of this piece is that as women, we don't know how to receive very well. Mm -hmm. We know how to give. We're activated a lot. We're activated. We give. We're doing things always, always, always. But when it comes to mother, you receive. And to do that, you can only be a vessel and hold for her to give her, let her to give you whatever she has available. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm out camping, fishing, etc. I spend hours in silence to do nothing mm -hmm. but just to receive. And my this is my lesson right now is in this piece is yeah. to receive and uh, of abundance, of beauty, of grace, of everything she has. Yeah. And so this is a as we say artwork describes us. Well this yes. describes me at this point in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't wait to read your book because, you know, like I said, it's, it's the way that you are teaching and in, in the story in the moment of what's happening with you and bringing that to life for, for all of us, like you said. Thank and now you. here, this is, um, this is great because I'm thrilled about like all of it, but the Tree Sisters quilt project that, um, you know, you you were inspired to bring to me, and you said, how about this? And we had a little bit of a chat, and I'm like, hell yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and I'll, you know, I'll support you in every way I can. And it was kind of in the new days, in the beginning days, I should say, yeah. of the nest. And um, so I said, okay, let's, let's set this, like, uh, I'll give you this certain little project space, and you know, we'll, we'll, st we'll call women in and see who wants to do this. And it just, it took off. I mean, every tree sister, I think that saw it made it even, even if they've never made or sewed or made, or made a, a close screen before they were making them. And, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, and I, I felt very blessed personally too, because I invited my mother to make one. And um, that was very special for me to be able to, you know, bring her in. Uh, she is a definitely a, always been a wild crafter from Ireland and she knitted a, the design a tree of, of, life. of a tree. A tree of, of life. life, yeah. The white tree yeah. of life. Yeah. And um, it was just so beautiful. So um, tell us, you know, tell, first, actually, you know, we could talk about the smudge fan and the wildcraft basket, and then let's concentrate a little bit on this quilt project. Actually, the smudge fan and the wildcrafted basket are just other examples of uh, sacred art that I do. These are things that uh, belong. You can see the wildcrafted basket is on my altar. It's something I go out and forage for. These are feathers that are given to me. Um, and again, the smudge fan uh, from a hawk that I picked up and moved off of the highway to ground. Mm -hmm. This is something I do. I'm a roadkill queen, you might say, <laughs> in regards to taking creatures off of the cement and putting them to Oh, so sweet. And, but she happened to, I took nothing from the bird. She happened to, when she got hit, uh, there were feathers along the highway that I collected off of her, mm -hmm. and that's what these are from. And um, she gave me, as I said, two primaries, two secondaries, both left and right. It was a balance. And when I laid her to the ground, the word came to me, remember. And it was like, well, remember what? I don't know you. Who am I going to remember you? What am I to remember? And her lesson to me was to remember to keep was to remember to get lift to look at things from a bigger point of view oh okay not always from my own little belly button yeah. but not only that but she provided feathers for the rudder for direction, for direction. and what you float yeah. on is the feminine what you float on is spirit mm -hmm. and i'm not very good at that i'm a real logical mind brain you know mm -hmm. but uh, this is her lesson for me this last month and so uh, it has been profound That's but funny. yeah now let's move on to Tree Sisters Quilt. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and we have, but I love, I love equally love the, you know, everything that you're talking about. Um, this one, it, this, this quilt is, has been long in the works. And, um, you know, like I said, it was one thing to collect all of the squares and everybody made them and then mailed them to you from all over the world. And it was then quite another thing uh, when you reached out to uh, a quilting bee or a quilting club. Quilting guild. Guild. Quilting guild. guild. Yeah. And, um, you know, so tell us that story. We have, we don't have any other pictures right here of the quilt project, but, um, you know, we're definitely going to be sharing lots of those uh, very shortly with everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, the idea of the Tree Sisters Quilt Project came to me because I realized that all of us women who are establishing relationship and friendship through the internet, okay, the internet is a an electronic interface. I don't get to see my sisters directly. I don't get to hug you, touch you. And I thought, you know, I live in the country and I thought, let's come together in a global collaborative project mm -hmm. to make each other more real to one another. Okay. And I put the call out and I think I received close to 47 squares from around the world. Now, mind you, I live in a village, a very tiny little village and my little postmaster down the road would get so excited going, you got something from Australia, something from Germany, how about England, <laughs> you know, Wales. It's like she got so excited that I saved the stamps for her, you know. Nice. Um, but since I'm not a sewer, I don't sew. As I said, I'm all fingers, thumbs, and telephone poles when it comes to sewing. <laughs> it's not, that is not my craft. And so mm -hmm. I uh, went to Mount Shasta. I went to Klamath Falls. I went to different areas around me looking for craft guilds, quilters who'd be willing to sew these together because it is a craft. Yeah. And my, this is actually out of MacArthur, California, a very small community. These are, it's a quilting guild called the Mountain Quail Quilters. Mm -hmm. And what they offered to do was to do this for free. All I did, and it began last year, I went in in August, which is a hard time because fairs coming on and they got a lot of projects going on. But they allowed me to introduce the project. They all clicked and went, yes. They'd never heard of Tree Sisters before. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to them about who we are, what we represent, what our passion is. And these women literally fell in love. They fell in love. 
and said, we will carry this for you. We will do this. And so we put together that day a project team of five women, two who are, work specifically on art quilts, a team leader, another couple, too, to help out. And so um, any pictures I post in the nest of the Tree Sisters quilts, those are the women who are doing this. It's hours, hours of yeah. work, of trimming and matching oh, and making things perfect. I mean, we've had, I can't tell you how many full days of just yeah. matching fabrics for the framing, putting things together. Now with the yeah. coronavirus, I'm not sure oh. when we're going to get next together. Yeah. But um, yeah. I'm still leaving it for them to finish. The first, we're going to make two quilts. We have so many squares that came through, thank yeah, you yeah. sisters, that <laughs> in order to keep the weight down and that we can show them, and I figure they're going to be sister, sisterhood of the traveling quilts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're finishing the tops and so I will, I have the commitment to get them done before year of the tree, 2021. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to plan on doing. Yeah. Yeah, so, it worked out well. It worked out well, you know, that we we postponed the year of the tree in, to, in order to see the year of the tree this year. And it's really amazing how, you know, that's actually happening. And, yes. you know, and the quote, like you said, with the coronavirus, it's I'm sure going to be a little bit on hold, even for those ladies. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just the gift of their hearts doing this from the goodness of their heart. And also it sounded like, I know you and I talked when, when you found them and it sounded like they were just really turned on by tree sisters and they were <laughs> they were what they tell me when i talk of tree sisters and talk about our passion of restoration you know reforestation restoration yeah. it's a revolution a Clyde talk about climate change and one of them approached me who is uh, from one of the local little towns and she said i feel you when you talk mm. she says there is nobody that uses these words she says, but when you talk, I'm changed. She says, and I get so excited about what I'm touching. And every time they touch a, a square to put it in, I know their story. Well, that's from so-and-so and she lives in such and such. And this was her story about it. And they, it's like, they consider it like alchemy. It is alchemy in a time of shadow. And this quilt is changing them. And they want to show it. They want to get it done by August if we can to show it yeah, to Northern yeah. California and then yeah, get it back yeah. probably to you. But um, yeah, uh, we yeah. want to get them done to show because they, mm -hmm. they want to have a big thing printed up of Tree Sisters and what this yeah. represents. Yes. And our story. Our, our story. story. That's and just so, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually literally, you know, quilting the world together as far as I'm concerned. It really feels that, it felt, it felt that sacred <clears throat> from the beginning. Um, yeah. And now as, as it's unfolding, we're seeing that it's unfolding in, in numerous ways. And every year, you know, that it's around and every year that it's shared even more so. You know, one of the things that, that I'm doing is putting together a, a little booklet that goes with it that will have the story of each single solitary woman who contributed and made us a, a square for the quilt as well as of course yourself and all of the mountain quail women because I really um, their energy is, I mean they've been holding it all this time yes and th their energy is also going into this in such a tremendous way and I know that mm -hmm. they've been moved by it and they each have a story now to tell as well of their experience and I think that you know this this is going to be so enriching for so many and yeah. you know whether we're a tree sister or they're new to tree sister be like what you know what is this tree sisters mm -hmm. and the quilt will be able to you know show it in a in a way that we can feel it also um you know if everybody can touch it you know it's hard to mail something like this all over the world but we're going to see what we can do you know to have it to be a traveling quilt and We'll see what we can do. We're trying see to make it light do. and travelable. And I'm going to purchase some extendable frames yeah. that, that can fit on. I figure it's for show. If we want to send it, send it to the Hague, send it anywhere, you know, right. as a, re as a representation. Claire can take it with her, you know, if she feels like it, take yeah. one of them with her so she can, she can show. But this is really, this is our voice. This is our creative voice. It is in support of Claire. 
It is in support of tree sisters. It's in support of one another. And it's something you can touch, something you can feel. And you can see it's just vivacious. It's just vibrant when you see it coming together like yeah this. yeah absolutely yeah. it's tremendous tremendous i love it and we have so many things i could talk about these things forever and we have to <laughs> we have to move on a little bit and i do, i want to um not to not to cut anything too short because we'll continue these conversations um, yes. with your work um so i'm going to go into the next uh, one here we had a project called weaving women back into matter with azul and uh you took it on and pretty much ran <laughs> with it uh, the way that you you generally do um some of the some of those pictures will be coming out soon too into a little video as soon as i can get the music on there mm -hmm. but um you wrap basically gave made sweaters for your trees <laughs> i actually these are these are winter scarves they're winter scarves yeah and i've got them all here but um i was i'm one who can't sit with idle hands so mm -hmm. to keep my little hands busy I've got all this recycled wool that was given to me by friends and friends who have died, their family giving it to me. And so mm. all I'm doing was putting it together in these long neck scarves, you know, for winter yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. They're gorgeous. So what I did, I ended up taking, I don't know how many of them, nine of them, and I tied the ends together to make it all one big thing. And then I went and I what do you call it? Like a knit, like a knit bombed tree, you know. <laughs> knit bombed an old cottonwood out in the middle of the wild yeah yeah she yeah. liked it she, she thought, loved it <laughs> oh loved yes it. of course it. she does she sees you come in all the time i'm sure yeah these are these are just so tactile i just want to grab them all they're gorgeous um and then here the, this is something else that you do we um the workshops that you teach for sustainability and um here you are with the teaching about the solar oven and ways to cook with the sun mm -hmm it's you know people wonder sometimes we feel very vulnerable because we depend so much on other energy resources and so a lot of people don't know you can cook with the sun now, i've been cooking with solar cooking probably for i don't know 30 years mm -hmm. and i use it every year it began when i was an ecologist and i had my daughters at home and coming home from the field at night always took me time so i cook by the sun i put my stuff out in the day you know positioning it kind of looking at the sun going okay where are you going to be and put my meal for dinner out so when i came home and the girls are going the girls would go out and get it it's like okay yeah um have dinner made and yeah. it doesn't take any electricity it doesn't burn except the parabolic will but the other ones don't burn mm -hmm. so you can have a casserole you can have meat you can have soups you can have whatever you want in a solar oven yeah. and walk away yeah and it, it takes slow nothing. cooker <laughs> yeah nature's slow cooker it's exactly it the parabolic is something else that she really opens the sun opens her throat on that one and so you can really scorch with that one but yeah. um so what i do is because i know these things because i've worked with them for a long time i just share when i can and people appreciate that because they're so surprised they're so surprised you know so mm -hmm. uh, this is a workshop i give every year here so yeah that's wonderful i may i remember making one out of a pizza box once yeah there's one in the very lower left hand corner here and that's my homemade box one you know yeah, yeah. oh there it yeah. is yeah 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 and then let's get to the next one here we go um, some hand dye uh, teaching yeah teaching about how to use uh native materials for dyeing just to add color to any kind of things. Paper, homemade paper, I do it with yarn, um, uh, whatever. And wolf lichen is right outside the door, hanging on pine trees. So Yeah, yeah. it's just a beautiful golden color. It's too. gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Really color, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I could sit and talk and look at this one forever because this is something that I love. So, but like I said, well, you, we have a lot to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll move on a little bit here. And that your herb wife craft. Oh, herb wife craft. I call myself an herb wife. Why? Because I don't have a credential to be certified as an herbalist. Mm -hmm. I'm a plant ecologist, a plant ecophysiologist. I'm a botanist. And so I can walk outside my door and start at my right toe and walk out 15 feet and have an herb class in that. I've been teaching the way of herbs for 44 years. 
Wow. And um, I'm now finishing up my certification just to, ha- just to kind of tighten up my own show. Right. And I have two women who are learning with me this year. Mm-hmm. But um, it's my herbal work, and especially now with the virus going yeah. on, I've had yeah. some very sick friends of which my herbs um, and my tinctures have worked marvelous on. Good. That's and good. It's, um, it's just an example. Like this top picture is choke cherry, apples, hops, alfalfa, amaranth, and mullein. That I got within 10 minutes from my home and just harvesting because I know where to go and I know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I do have, um, this is another one of my teaching uh, things. And I try to put it together at times for tree sisters, you know, from Mm -hmm. uh, making anything from dandelion flower cake to dandelion wine to... Mm -hmm how to do this how do you make an ox bowl and um pollyanna pollyanna had a really teaching on that one rosemary ox bowl okay <laughs> one. um yeah so this is this is my passion and this year my shoulder really goes into the herb craft i mean heavy okay. because um it's needed by others and yeah. it's not just for me it's for others and so right. um my wild craft abilities will be on high high working stuff this year so yeah mm-hmm. yeah good to have you around <laughs> and here you go taking a little <laughs> taking a little yeah <laughs> no this is actually i'm a pisces and i'm a woman of water um i was born in the delta of two rivers and it's funny that i seem to live most of my adult life within that watershed and uh this is where i fish on Ash Creek and I can't help myself but get into her because Mm -hmm. why water is healing water is the greatest strongest alchemist I've ever met in nature you know Mm -hmm. in regards to action in regards to receptivity and that's me literally just took off my fishing clothes put my pole down I had a girlfriend with me that day so she was taking pictures but it's like I'm letting mother hold I'm letting mother heal Mm -hmm. I'm letting mother I'm releasing all of my tension, all that shadow in myself into her. Yeah. And she yeah. just runs it right on down the creek, right and on down the ocean. Right into so, the river. Yeah. No, yeah. Mo- and no montage. <laughs> yeah. No montage here. Just a little alteration of an original photo to share yeah. about that. Because yeah. water, water is so important to engage with in these mm-hmm. times. It water. Is. In your bathtub. Water. Yeah. Angels of water. Angels, Angels of water. water. And just a couple of days ago, World Water Day, although every day is Water Day. I have a Pisces as well. So, um, and here she is. I just <laughs> love her. I couldn't wait to get okay. to her. We have right here. Finesse. And there she is. We Yay. have Finesse. And she's right here. This is Miss Finesse. I'll show you something about her, though, that you don't get to. I'm doing a little show and tell here. Okay. Let me, let me okay. stop the screen. There we go. Let me see if I can get her down here a little bit. Her headdress. This is a gourd I grew in my yard. (laughs) She has the blue. She's got blue wool that comes off of, I don't know what it came off of, maybe a rug or something. But her headdress, she actually has on her headdress all kinds of feathers and lichens. She even has the skull bones here of of a mouse that came out of a place where owls hang and stuff like that she is a mixed media paper she's paper and um i don't did i i put i put something in for her legs to hold her up but i had this thing of just making birds i never made one i don't know but she um (laughs) i created her as i told you before i i created her and brought her to a friend who had just been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. He was an artist friend of mine too, and yeah. Roger. And I just wanted to say, hey, look what I'm doing. And he just fell in love with her and said, she stays with me. She I said, so what? He said, she stays with me. She stays with me through this. Mm-hmm. So he wanted her at the foot of his bed where he could watch her all the time. Wow. And she stayed. She stayed through his last months. She stayed during his dying. She stayed during the time we were dressing him for a walk. (laughs) Believe it or not, we dressed him as he goes out for a walk. And she stayed with him 
when he went outside the door and his family released him to the mortuary people mm -hmm. and for cremation. And his brother, Johnny, who's another artist from Oakland, California, said that it was, he was so touched by the presence of this bird, he named her Finesse, which yeah. means fine. Yeah. And yeah. so she's a fine bird. <laughs> she's a very <laughs> fine bird. <laughs> yeah. She and what an own. honor. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. She is an honor. Yeah. Yeah. Go back here. She, yeah. If you look at, she just, you can see, you know, how. She's paper. Can, she's paper, Kathy. She's paper. Yeah. She does. No armature paper. except, except for the legs. It's like, oh, I think I need some kind of, I think I went to the kitchen and got a couple of skewers I use for barbecue. <laughs> 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 to hold her upright, you know. Yeah, the rest yeah. is just paper, 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 paper. Yeah. yeah, you just do what you need to in the moment, right, Barbara? You got That's it. That's right. Got it all there. Now, now we go into a little bit um, more of the collage again, or mo you rather call it montage, right? Now, no, we have two different things. Montage okay. is done with digital photos, okay. where you're cut and paste and digital. This is a hand construction. Okay. The so mountains in the background the planet in the background, they're all cut out of magazines, mm -hmm. okay? Um, every piece on this is cut out of a magazine. Uh, her headdress is made up of sundews, of wheat, of, let's see, peacock feathers. It looks like, oh, tribal drawings. There's fire, you know, this, the fire mm -hmm. on the left-hand side of her head signifies spirit. She comes from the depths of the earth. This is the mother of all. And, and who is this for? This, I did this at first for myself. Again, all my arts for myself. I did this at first for myself to help give an expression to my impression of Mother Earth, of Gaia. Mm -hmm. And because I'm, ca ex, you know, I'm Catholic background, of course I think of the Madonna. But no, I've never seen a Madonna like this one. She comes from the bowels of the earth and she rises with the gifts of water down the lower right and bread below that. She's nursing a child on her breast. Mm -hmm. And she has the, I have a demure picture of her on the right hand side, which is Our Lady of Fatima, you know, this yeah. demure yeah. little woman that has no pizzazz to her. Yeah. And the one on the left hand side of it, she feeds us. This woman is feeding her child drops of water for nourishment. Yeah. Now, I had this, I made this in 90, two years ago. I think it was 98, and a call went out uh, last year for uh, grandmother of Flora de Mayo. And she was holding circle with all of the indigenous grandmothers of the world in uh, New Mexico. And she asked if anyone would have an artistic donation to help pay for the flight tickets to get them there. And so I offered this to their online auction, well, which never... got full price, which I went, Whoa. I mean, very quickly, it sold. And it was yeah, like, I can see why. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed, number one, that she has a purpose with whoever received her. Mm -hmm. And she had a secondary purpose of the gathering to the call for circle for the indigenous grandmothers. Right, so, right, right. Really, really, I can see exactly why. Whoop, I went a little, I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> and then here we go. Okay, this one here, believe it or not, is called Crone. <laughs> now, <clears throat> there's a couple of things here. Um, this represents the Celtic wheel of life. My mother was Irish. My fa father was Spanish and Mexican. Uh, Metizo, we were mixed blood, a little bit of French, a little bit of this and that, but the colors that are used in the wheel on this from the east is the yellow, south is the green, red to the west and white to the north. It's not for the indigenous peoples. It comes from our Celtic peoples, Kathleen. And um, in the very far, this is, speaks about who I am right now and who many of us are right now at this time of our lives as we have entered into Crone. Now on the left-hand side, it's all kind of fuzzy because I put a piece of white tissue over everything. This is a hand construction. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side is the tree of life. And if you look carefully, you'll see a hand that looks like this with the goddess coming up just to mm -hmm. her shoulder on the right. Because right. we were born in the hand of Venus as women. Mm -hmm. And we're born into the tree of life. And as you follow through, you'll see the little bird who's just coming out of the egg. Yes. And in her apron, when you see it in the flesh, this is hard to see it like this, you'll see a little girl with her eyes poking out of her lap. You'll see another small girl. 
And you'll see as it goes around in the circle, you'll see people getting married, having children, dancing. Yeah. yeah. And but you can can't see it too clear. But this is this is our lives. These are our lives. These are our stories that we carry within the apron, within our aprons, our aprons of family, our aprons of living, our aprons of learning, our aprons of illness, our aprons of everything that we carry in our lives. She at this time, her head, the woman's head and her granddaughter's head is clear because where she lives now is to the north, to the land of the eagle, to the land of the polar bear, to the land of knowledge and wisdom. And as crone, um, all these things are symbolic. The roses are symbolic for things, I mean, in the West for maturing and things like that. And so, but she has clarity, but her story begins from her right shoulder down this way mm -hmm. and it swirls up to where we are now and where we stand where i stand mm -hmm. as crone in this life right now beautiful oh i love this one maybe it's because i'm irish but i think it anyway <laughs> well um, what's really important to me at the time was when i was first doing it so you can't use the medicine wheel i said yeah, i can use yeah. my people's medicine wheel which yeah. is the celtic wheel of life which have similar colors Oh, yeah. And the indigenous people, we, you know, the Celts and the Irish, we have our own indigenous peoples too yeah. from the northern yeah. latitudes. And so I'm pulling mm -hmm. on those ancestors. Yeah. And I love ancestors. the journey that you bring us through in here, you know, and how it, go, it follows our journey of our life. And there's, there's so, it's rich, rich with uh, symbol and story. And thank uh, you. Yes. I've had, I've, when people see it in the flesh, they just go, oh my, you got it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you did? got it. You did. You hit it. You got me. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> and here's one of your ultra bowls. Mm -hmm. I have a thing about little bowls. This is one of my little ultra bowls here that I make for altars. Again, mm. paper, paper. So um, my idea began with this for altar bowls because I needed, I needed one for my altar. And then I realized it's so feminine to have the level of receptivity it receives it receives receives intent it receive it receives that's what it is and yes. so again yeah. the bowls are representative of my own heart of where i am beautiful we'll take a closer look at that one when we when we look at a couple more of these on here i just want to look at a couple of these um digital collages that you the have three sisters yeah. have received them Whoops, um, I'm back. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. But in regards to the bowl, yeah, that's what these are for. There we go. And then the, you have some books that you put together with the. I have a circle. It's not a Tree Sisters uh, Grove, but I have a committed circle of women that we have committed to each other for friendship as we age. Mm -hmm. um, so we go, we have a place, place we go near where I go fishing off Ash Creek, which is a place called Bassett Pond. And last summer, we had a whole lot of processing going on. Yeah. Aging parents, selling houses, just f wildland fires, all the stuff that was going on around us. And so yeah. we would gather to give support at this Ash Creek at Bassett Pond. Yeah, so exactly. what I did was take a picture of the trees there that ran alongside the creek. One, I mirrored them and did my own artwork on it. And I perched, made these books for my, for our circle. I made these books. Mm -hmm. They're um, just empty page books, notebooks, mm -hmm. to remind them of the blessings that we experienced with each other mm -hmm. um, going there. It was, it's within, I mean, as again, three miles from town. We come from different drainages, different geographic locations. We knew that if we went there for an afternoon, we could call on someone to be there. Yeah, and yeah. so this is women supporting women is yeah, what yeah. this is about. And that's why I call it the gathering place because mm -hmm. we gathered, we gathered. Yeah. It's so important. It's in, 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 you know, bringing it back and giving women, all of us, you know, hopefully can find a place like this in our lives, whether it's in Tree Sisters Grove or, just are bringing, bringing our sisters together in a gathering yeah. place. Yeah, friendship, friendship. And it's not easy. It's no. not easy. No, <laughs> it's no, not no. easy. <laughs> no, there's a com <laughs> the commitment, like the commitment you said. Someone will always show up. Maybe not everyone. Right. Right. Uh, and this one is gorgeous, too. You have that there in your studio you showed me earlier. 
Um, yes, I do. And again, the the Our Lady of Guadalupe began with a crayon color page that you get offline that says, you know, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and she's very like this. And I said, you know, a woman doesn't stay pregnant. She gives birth. Yeah. And so I went a little bit off on my own with Our Lady of Guadalupe here, and she's given birth. Mm -hmm. And again, feeding and nurturing. Now, with her, with Our Lady of Guadalupe and the story of her, she is the Queen of Heaven. So that's why she has the connection with the lightning and the mm -hmm. corona, which is built of uh, exotic papers. Mm -hmm. Again, she is a construct out of a head that I got out of a newspaper, some, out of a magazine. Her neck is part of it's a man, part of it's a woman. Mm -hmm. The child, these aren't whole things I'm cutting out. They're actually constructed and put together. Right. Her cloak is yeah. of the heavens. It's of the heavens. And so she wraps us. She, she says, are you not my children? Do I not hold you within the folds of my cloak? And mm -hmm. that's, what she, that's what she is. She's standing on the earth and you can't see much of the moon anymore behind her. But with it are, Im, are different symbols of immortality, which includes the hummingbird and the yeah. bluebird. Yeah. And the rose, the Miriam always has roses about her. She's got a thing about roses. So that's thrown in there too. <laughs> but um, I've been wanting to do her for a long time because um, there's something about her that touches me. And um, uh, actually when my priests, I, I actually lead mass when I can. I'm a yes. singer and um, at a very small, small church. And my priest, I brought it in just to show him. And he went, oh my gosh, we have to bless this. <laughs> <laughs> so he holy watered it and holy watered my hands and mm. blessed it. And so with that, she stays above my bed usually. But she's actually right here. I took her out of her, yeah. I took her out of her um, thing here so people could see a little bit. Twitter, you can see the moon. You can see the little moon in here too. You know, she's just... And so these pieces I do that are collage, made out of magazines. Yeah. They're pretty good size. They're pretty good size, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, re they really are. Well, Barbara, I just, I'm just so, I feel like we have gone through a, um, like an entire retreat with you um, and learned so much, like a, um, a mini workshop of each of these things and I know that we can delve into each one even deeper I mean that that is what keeps coming to me that I wish we could just keep you know like each one we could talk more deeply about the herbs we could talk more deeply about your adventures with connecting with with her herself and then your collages and where they come from and just all of it really is just so it's such a blessing you're so kind it, well, so it's true. It's true. It's very, and as I told you before, Kathleen, yeah. I never took an art class. Yeah. I'm not trained. I'm yeah. not trained. It yeah. just, it's just this that needs expression. Absolutely. Know? And she finds a way. She finds, she a, way. finds a way. She yeah. finds a way. As long as you say yes, yeah. and, and I can tell you, say yes all the time, and also take care of yourself and and other people around you. I mean, it's just a it's really a joy to, to know you and to um, feel your heart. I think no matter all of these the beautiful honor. things that you do. But the honor is mine, Kathleen. Kathleen, the honor is mine. Thank you. Thank you.